I'm John Chaclain. And I'm Jason Brown. And I'm Carter Watts. And we're Team 9, tasked with creating a Battle Frog Rube Goldberg machine. This machine is going to be produced to target 5th grade students to reinforce, reinforce concepts of math and science in, fun, in a fun and interesting way. So, one important key business goal for us is that this is safe to use for these young students, but more importantly, it needs to be a low, of low cost. And this is because our primary market is teachers and school systems, as well as tutors and training services. And typically, these organizations will have a low budget. Taking a look at the project management timeline, we're going to have roughly a three-month period from start to finish and we've divided each of the 11 tasks into roughly four stages. The first stage includes customer needs, target specifications, and intellectual property. The second stage includes um, concept generation and concept testing. The third stage in includes product architecture, industrial design, design for manufacturing, and economic analysis, followed by a fourth stage, which includes prototyping and presentation of the final product. And we chose the final two tasks to be linked sequentially because they depend directly on the task before it. Also, each of these stages is roughly two weeks in duration so that we can ensure that we finish at our projected um, date. And as you can see here in the, in the red the coloring that we have our critical path. And this critical path includes target specifications, concept testing, product architecture, industrial design, and design for manufacturing, and finally prototyping and the presentation of the final product. Also you can see here from the progress line, we have completed the first two tasks which include customer needs and target specifications. So as Carter said, we have already completed the customer needs and target specification parts of the project management timeline. And for the customer needs, we wanted to figure out exactly what we wanted this machine to be like. Now the customers are going to drive whatever the machine turns out to be because they're the ones that are going to purchase it. So we interviewed six potential customers, three teachers and three students, and we asked them what they would want to see out of a machine that would reinforce concepts that they learned in class. As you can see on this chart, uh, some of the major recurring needs that the teachers gave were reinforcing class concepts, being mentally stimulating and exciting for the students, having a sturdy construction so that they could use it again and again and it wouldn't break, and also having a low cost so that the teachers could afford it or the school systems could afford it. And for the students, they wanted it to be exciting, uh, challenging for them, and also to have multiple designs and they, did, they didn't want to just follow a set um, assembly guide, but they wanted to be able to use those instructions to further their understanding and to branch off and create multiple designs from that. And these needs were interpreted into engineering needs that we could fulfill as part of the project product design process, including high strength materials, inexpensive materials, and an assembly guide that would be comprehensive enough to allow the students to understand what they were constructing, but would also give multiple ways to construct the machine and have them select which one would be the best option. We created two customer profiles in order to decide exactly who we would target to purchase and to use this product. For the teachers who would be purchasing this product, the teacher would be somebody who really cared about his or her students. They would have money either from the school board, or from a grant, or out of their own pocket to purchase this machine. And they would also have class time outside of lecture that they would be able to use to incorporate <coughs> this machine into their class. Now the student would be somebody who wanted to learn with hands-on activities, not just to sit down and listen to a lecture, but be able to take what they learned and apply it further in a more real-world situation. For using this product, we decided that it would most likely be used in a classroom setting. After the teacher gave a lecture on the relevant topics, they would distribute the machines to groups of students, and the students would then assemble these machines and learn and be able to apply the concepts that they learned in the lecture 
to the machine and see in a real world sense how those math and physics concepts actually work. Now, for target specifications, uh, some of the highlights, we wanted to use an Arduino board that would enable the students to get an introduction to electricity and electrical concepts that they would not ordinarily be introduced to for several more years down the road in their educational careers. We also wanted it to be assembled in less than 10 minutes because it was important that the majority of the time spent with the machine be spent learning about the concepts rather than just assembling and taking down the machine. We also found it was important to have inexpensive parts and these parts would be able to be replaced easily if they did happen to break after being used multiple times. So we decided to go with a cost variable economic model which gave us two break even points and a maximum profit. Upon doing some research, we found that uh, our cost to produce one of these units is going to be about $100 from that cost coming from the Arduino board, electronics, and other various materials that we need to construct this project. <coughs> On top of that, we're also going to have an $11,250 annual fixed cost. And because of these two costs, we decided to sell our product for $200 per unit. As you can see, our first break-even point is at $130, at 130 units, and our second break-even point is at 870 units, and our maximum profit is at 500 units, and if we sell 500 units exactly, we should be able to make a profit of $13,750. So, in conclusion, we want our Root Goldberg machine to be able to reinforce math and science concepts that fifth graders would learn in class. We feel it is important that our machine should be able to, with help, to be durable and be able to withstand any kind of wear and tear that a fifth grader would be able to put on it. And also, we want it to be able to have replaceable parts, that way if any part does break, be able to cheaply and affordably be able to replace it drastically reducing the cost and not have to re replace the entire machine. We also wanted to focus on reinforcing concepts that fifth graders would learn in class and that way they'd really be able to understand what they're learning. And we also hope to sell around 500 products in order to maximize our profit. Thanks for watching.